The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Hey everybody, welcome to Auntie Zaza's Fireside Chat. And I'm Auntie Zaza, I'm the owner of Auntie Zaza's Fiberworks and Yarn Shop. We're located at 104 Main Street in Northeastern Massachusetts, and we are a brick and mortar store. Um, we offer fiber education classes in knitting and in crochet. Uh, we also have workshops um, in specialty techniques and finishing work, um, as well as um, uh, workshops sometimes on wet felting, we've done candle making, uh, soap making, and a variety of other fun uh, programs that we do. Um, and we offer classes for uh, kids as young as six and seven years of age, um, all the way up to um, my oldest student was 100 years old. So um, right through the lifespan, it's a really fun, vibrant community that's multi-generational, and we really look forward forward to serving you with um, any of your fiber arts needs. So come on down and see us. Uh, you can find us on the internet at Auntie Zaza's Fiberworks and um, you can call us at 774-269-6899. Uh, today's episode, this is our season one, episode one. We're so excited to be here with Eastern Cable Access Television. Thank you for this opportunity. Today's episode, we're gonna be making uh, little hats. Um, I'll be teaching you the different um, steps through the process of how to create a hat with a ribbed brim. And we're using a really fun yarn that is made by Sirdar called Baby Blossom, um, which has a magical way of unfolding as if it's a little bit of a flower patch. It comes in all sorts of different colors, really fun and super easy where it makes it look like you're doing a fair isle technique when actually the yarn's doing all the work for you when all you do is just knit, knit, knit. And uh, it magically unfolds. I'll show you this little one so you can kind of get an idea. Here's a little baby blanket that we made with it and it just magically unfolds um, to make it look like little flowers. I guess this way it sort of looks like uh, little fuchsias. And then if I hold it with the green down, it looks more like a little tulip garden. So super fun yarn. And we have loads and loads of colors um, for your next project. So come on down. All right, without further ado, we'll get into showing you the different techniques of making a ribbed beanie. With this you can see with the more stitches you cast on, the little more pronounced the flower pattern might look to you. One of the techniques when you work with this is you wanna make sure as you pull the yarn from the ball that the sequence unfolds first with green and white, then with green and white and pink, and then ending with white and pink so that the colors come out in the pattern with the green or the flower leafy pattern is at the bottom and then the blossom is up at the top. So as we proceed from here, I'll show you a few techniques. The first thing is what's called the uh, long tail cast on. The long tail cast on is a cast on that's used by about, mm, I'd say, 85% of the time for the most experienced knitters because it gives you a very nice little border of the edge and it has a little elasticity to it so that you don't get that um, contraction or I call it like a tourniquet effect that sometimes our cast-ons can feel really rigid. So this gives a nice little stretchy effect. And the way that we do it, I think about little two little dancy legs with the string that's the long tail goes towards me and the string to the ball goes away. And I grab it and I put my finger and my thumb inside and it makes like a, an L shape with my fingers. And then I flick my thumb over and I see a Z for Zaza. Then the tip of my needle goes to the heel of my thumb and I go up my thumb and catch the string. 
I go to the tip of my finger, I go down and catch the string, and then I scoop it under there to create the stitch. I drop it off my thumb, and there's my stitch. So again, I go in, grab it, make that L, flick it over like hitchhiking, and there's Z for Zaza. Then I take the tip to my heel, go up, over to my finger, go down, and then right scoop it through like scoop of sugar. Goes up, down, and through. Again, grab it, thumb and finger in, flick it over, thumb up, finger down, and scoop it right through. And I'm going to do so until I have a multiple of eight stitches, because I always like multiples of eight. You can choose any number that you like to use. But for me, typically, when I cast on for a hat, I'm casting on a multiple of eight. Then what you'll read in the direction is it's going to say, join it in the round, and be careful not to twist. And what that means is we're going to bring our tips around to form a circle. And you don't want anything that looks like this, where the stitches are coming up and over the cable. Otherwise, you're going to create an infinity symbol and not a cylinder. So you're not going to get that hat effect. So we want to spin it around so there's no twist. And then we bring our tips together. And you go into that first stitch, knitting just like that. And the knitted stitch, I like a little poem that goes in through the front door, once around the back, peek through the window, out jumps Jack. Go in through the front door, once around the back, peek through the window, out jumps Jack. And then our purl stitch is we bring the yarn to the front, go in, wrap it around, peek it through, and jump it off. So what we're going to do now is what's called a two by two ribbing. And what that means, you'll read it in the pattern, it might say 2x, 2x2. And what that means is you're going to knit two and then purl two. If a pattern says do a ribbing that's a 1x1, you're knit one, purl one. So that's uh, just a helpful little tip in terms of interpreting patterns. So for us, in this hat that we're making, and I'll reach over here, show you my next little phase. We have our two by two ribbing that we're going to work up to about two and a half or three inches. This gives us ample room for that happy little fold, which the fold then protects the ears and uh, makes it nice and cozy in the end. Once you get through your rib of that two by two ribbing, then you're going to switch to just knitting. And when we're in circular needles, you're actually knitting all the way around and you just knit, 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 knit around and around in a circle. And what's happening is that the stitches, I, I like to think about it like um, a spiral staircase, as if you're holding on to the banister and as you go around, your face is always looking to the outside or we call it in when we're knitting or crocheting the public side. That is the side that people are gonna see as they're looking at the garment. So this is the front of my work or the public side. And all of the stitches as I go around are showing the knitted stitch. The back or the inside of my hat shows the little bumps and those are the pearls. That's the back of a stitch. So we're, when we're in the round, what's so great is all you do is just knit, 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 going around and around and around until you reach your desired height which is very nifty. You see my little technique of like speed along, make it look so easy. So if you're beginning, it might look like this where you go in, you let go, you wrap it around, peek it through, jump it off. As you become more experienced, your, your hand position can be like this and it's just a little dip of your finger ends up creating that little stitch. I know some of my students say like, oh, you don't even have to look at it when you're doing it. And it's like, yeah, that's true. After you've done it for quite a while and I've been doing it since I'm like all of 17 years old or something like that, I've knit a few stitches. So I can knit in a dark movie theater even or read a book when I'm knitting. It's kind of a little claim to fame and the magic of the whole thing. 
And speaking of magic, or I like to think of like the alchemy of what we do as makers when we knit or crochet, it's to me, it's just so mind blowing to think that we can make stuff with two sticks and a string, or we can make stuff with, in crochet, you're working with a hook and, and string, and then we can make all sorts of incredible and magical things. So as we're working this around in, in the round, we're gonna come to our desired height, which depending on how big your hat, hat is, will vary, but you're somewhere around, let's say five or six inches for a kid's hat. For an adult hat, it might be eight or nine inches from your fold. Um, you know, depending, like if you, the longer you go, the kind of the more slouchy the hat's gonna be and it will hang off the top of your head a little bit like a, we call them celebrity slouchies or, um, a little bit like a stocking cap. And if you want a beanie hat, then you just make it a little bit shorter. And all of that is specified in the pattern. Um, so I was just gonna show you how do you then transition, if right now is where we're gonna begin the decrease, I'm gonna start with using my double pointed needles. And double pointed needles for people can be very intimidating. But what we're doing is our circular needle can travel over 16 inches or even greater than that, right? But as we start to close the top of the hat, we need to be using the double pointed needles to make a smaller circumference. And it's quite easy where you're just gonna start loading up your work. And what you'll do is just take one of your double pointed needles and you just begin working with it. And I'm going to start my decrease right when I'm doing this here. So I'm gonna do my knit six, six stitches, and then two will be knit together, it would be called a K2 tog when you're looking at a pattern. K2 tog, knit two together is the tog. So you just take the two stitches and you just knit them up as one, and that's a decrease. So you're gonna create a, um, the whole decrease row by doing knit six, just regular old knit six, and then knit two together. And you do that all the way around the hat. And then you're going to do just a knit row. So all the evening rows you just knit. And the, the following row will be a decrease row, but this time instead of knit six, knit two together, you're gonna to knit five, knit two together. Then your even row is going to be just knit. Then the next row, which would be your row one, two, three, four, five. Row five is going to be knit four, knit two together. And each row progressively, you'll decrease one fewer stitch. Do that all the way around. And what's happening is you're creating a dome. It makes a cylinder where you do this gradual decrease. That, that row by row, you're gonna be losing, let's say eight stitches or 10 stitches, which is gonna to amount to a couple of inches, because this particular project is about three and a half stitches to the inch. That's the gauge. So three and a half stitches to the inch, if we're taking away you know, some eight or 10 stitches, then we're actually losing a couple of inches each row. And then you'll see as it goes up, it's gonna make this nice little dome effect. Show you in a different color. See how it does that nice little spiral effect right at the end through our decrease. And each of these is where we've done our knit two together that makes that pretty little pattern of the decrease right at the top. All right, now I will show you the last little bit, if you will. So this is, um, the, the knitting needles that I'm using are called um, Knitter's Pride. What I like about them is they're actually color coded. So I know when I'm working on these red needles, these are my number 10s. I can just look in my knitting bag, like the green ones are number nine, Do you know, the, the black ones are 10 and a half. So I can just look in my bag and I get to see which, um, which size needle I'm working on. Okay, so I'm gonna show you as we load these up that we're gonna come be closing. You can see how I've progressively done my decrease and I'm now on knit two together all the way around. And you can see how small the circumference has become. 
And I'm going to keep doing this until my work comes down to only six stitches left. It's a little bit like this excess stuff is just kind of hanging out. I just push it out of my way. And again, I'm doing my uh, load up these needles with knit two together all the way around. This is kind of our last row of decreases as we go. Take me a little minute to get it around and then I'll show you how to how to uh, take it off the needle. It's very satisfying to make things, I will say. And I don't know, I was thinking about Elizabeth Zimmerman, who's kind of our, our guru of knitting. And she's got this hilarious book, if you like reading funny knitting pattern books, which is one of my passions. But Eliz that's kind of funny what I just said. But Elizabeth Zimmerman writes, just keep knitting. It doesn't really matter. Just try to find a head or a body that's going to fit whatever you make. So she's kind of got this relaxed style in her knitting with regards to her gauge which is just make stuff and have fun making stuff and uh, try not to worry about it. Somebody will like it and some head's going to fit, fit it. In the beginning, what you're going to notice as you make hats is some of the sizes, they, they might be a little wonky. Like, I'll say this one. I'm just going to put just pause in my action here just for a minute. But if you look at this one, this is really, really big. But if I had a lot of braids, I would want it to be that it would be able to stretch. So that one I did with 88 stitches. This one is probably more fitting for most adult heads, which is 80 stitches. And then the fewer stitches that I'm casting on, this one I just did with 56 because I'm all about the multiple of eight. And this is actually for a little kid. It's probably like three to six months old. So that's just a fun thing. And back at my little project here, I'm going to keep going with my decrease of knitting the two together. Coming around till I have six left. So back at it. Once we've got our, we've got our uh, six stitches here, we're going to actually just cut the yarn. And I like to put it through my needle like this. I fold it in half, slide it off, and then boop, pop it right through like that. And what you're going to do is you look down on your needles. We're going to bring this yarn that's coming from this and we want to bring it over here. You want to be careful not to, I call it helicopter, right? You want, don't want to spin your needles around like this, but kind of coming around in a circle, bringing it over to this side. We're just going to scooch the stitches off just like that, right onto your embroidery needle one at a time, boom, boom, boom. And then the needle falls away. We're all done with that one. Again, bringing it over. We pull it right through like that. And now we're going to come this way through these last three stitches. And then you'll see it just is going to come together. Boom, like that. Just pull it nice and tight. And it brings it right together kind of magically, just like that in our little spiral. Oh, I was going to mention that there is an anatomy to the hat. So I've talked about the cast on, talked about how we bind off or we finish our work. The other pieces of the hat would be the ribbing. Then you'll read the body of the hat as you read your pattern. And then you'll read about the crown of the hat. And that's how we create the dome at the top. So those are words that you might see in a pattern that says, oh, this is going to be, um, you know, your ribbing pattern, this is the body of the work, and then finally uh, you'll have directives about how to do the crown. And then what we're going to do, you, you always want to weave in your ends, because if we were to just cut it, everything's going to become to come unraveled. Where it's the inside of the hat, nobody's really going to see it. You can just kind of go around and grab the bumps and just like weave in the end. I don't know. I like thinking like maybe four or five times of just weaving that end in. And then you can take your scissors and you're going to cut the, the yarn very close to your work like this. And now it's all woven in.
Ta-da! Yet another little happy hat. Isn't that sweet? You could put pom-poms on them. You could get furry pom-poms, or you can leave them just like this. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, and uh, we look forward to sharing with you another fireside chat with Auntie. Uh, next time we'll be looking at a crochet project so that we share a little bit about knitting and building your confidence and your techniques about knitting, and then giving you an opportunity to build skills and learn some new stuff about crocheting. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Happy knitting and happy crocheting. Bye-bye.